Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my full review, the digitally digested segment for the Microsoft Surface Go. Now, for those of you that have been considering whether or not to pick up one of these tablets, um, it's a good question because at face value, it seems like a very smart way to go because, and I'm not trying to be cute, because it either respectively $399 or uh, $549 US dollars, you're getting a tablet that can also be a PC if you absolutely need to have one on the go in a small form factor. Affordable, I won't call it because truthfully, right here at the top of the review, I'm going to tell you that the real failing of this product, which I think is what many people already know out of the gate, is pricing. And that's because even though I just said to you 400 and 550 uh, for the two different variations, which only uh, come down to the actual uh, storage space, which is critical because in the one I have here that I've been using now since launch, we do have a 128 gig NVMe drive, which is significantly faster than the 64 gigs of flash storage in the base model. And then you also have additional RAM here, 8 gigs as opposed to the 4 in the base model. All things aside, build quality, screen quality, which is good, but isn't going to knock your socks off exactly the same. Expandable storage, exactly the same. Everything is identical. Uh, the key difference, again, being just the drive type, drive capacity, and the RAM. Cameras are the same. But again, to the point I was making, the core problem with this is that in order to end up using this as anything other than a tablet, you will need to buy, of course, the Microsoft uh, Surface Go cover, which... Even if it goes on sale over the holiday, you're still going to be spending over $100 for that, as well as the possibly the pen as well. So the expenditures become robust enough that, in my opinion, this is really not a consideration at all. I would take a pass on this altogether. I can see you know, some customers coming around to it, but for its price, for its performance, um, ultimately you should be pushed towards a Surface Pro. Because yes, I know those are larger, but they're not big enough in terms of the size difference or too much larger that I can actually justify intelligently or just forget intelligently recommending this for the money to anyone I know. Forget about, you know, care about obviously uh, or don't care about because 400 550 whichever way you go, maybe you're best off going with the $400, the entry point, because there isn't enough performance here to begin with. And I say that because in the tablet mode, which of course you can easily switch in and out of right here, it's fine. I mean, Microsoft has an ecosystem. Is it as strong as Android or iOS? Absolutely not. Is it functional? Yes, it is. But to me, the reason to really purchase this is, again, what I mentioned at the top of the video, which is having it as a secondary or maybe tertiary Windows 10 machine. Granted, very underpowered. But even coming in knowing that it's underpowered, uh, it just it isn't up to snuff. And that's why I say, unless you absolutely are going that route of knowing you want this tablet because you want a miniature Surface Pro, which would be the go, and you're willing to take on the extra expenditures associated with buying this to really make it work as a Windows machine, which of course is the type cover, as well as uh, picking up, again, as I mentioned, the uh, whoops, uh, the pen. I mean, all said and done, you're right at the entry-level Surface Pro. And that's a, a, probably about to be refreshed any day now. Um, so... I was just doing that for load times to see what it would be like. I mean, in Edge, it performs perfectly fine. But jump into Chrome, and it, as I mentioned in other videos, updates, as well as comparisons, it just becomes unbearable. And then I'm not even going to talk about my experience with Photoshop. Can it run it? Oh, yeah, it can run it. Would you want to run it? Would it be your first or even your second choice to run it? No. So I feel like what this does is it fills a void for people who really don't want to take their laptop but know that if they absolutely must utilize Windows 10, they have that capability in a tablet. But again, I'm left scratching my head why you would ever consider this 
over a Surface Pro model because the Surface Pro model is going to inherently give you, you know, an experience that's much better in every form and fashion. Granted, we haven't seen uh, the updates, the revisions, like, you know, having Type-C on here, I think is a fantastic thing. I mean, again, there are your ports, um, headphone jack, Type-C, speakers are solid, the Pogo ports on the bottom for actually connecting to the type cover, uh, your kickstand is still fantastic. I mean, the build quality is great, and that's why I thought this was going to be a no-brainer, you know, power button, volume rocker, but at the end of the day, I feel confused by this thing. I didn't think I would feel this way, I have to say, um, because your micro SD card slot, on paper, this seemed like it was going to be a definitive killer, in my opinion, to what Android and iOS, aka Apple, have to offer. And really the only other Android tablet you'd consider this to, to put it against, pit it against, is the Tab S4 or the Tab S3, which I did do a comparison video on. Uh, battery life is solid, but it's solid for a Windows machine. For something that, you know, is running Windows, even if you're talking about S mode. Uh, it, still, it still is not in the realm of what mobile OS-driven uh, tablets are going to be able to yield. And that goes to Apple's favor as well as Samsung's and any other manufacturer of an Android tablet. So you need to bear that in mind. And that's why, as I've mentioned, this is a bit of a head-scratcher. Because I like Microsoft's intent. I like their concept. I like the look and feel. But that Intel Pentium Gold chip just seems to be the deal breaker for me, personally. Uh, the cameras are fine, but again, I'm not really worried about the cameras. This is a tablet. It's not even a secondary function for me. Um, my phone would be my primary, you know, if I didn't, wasn't actually using a camera. Anyone who follows my channel knows that cameras come first, phones second. Uh, phones are only if you have nothing else, and I guess that's what a tablet uh, will particularly be for that individual that tends to use tablet cameras. Of course, the front facing is important for video conferencing, video chat, which does work very well. But again, the bottleneck, that processor is just a killer. So yes, you can edit video, you can run Adobe, but will you want to? I'm not sure. And that's why I say I'm, this is really <laughs> the only customer that I can see really loving this device is the one who must have Windows 10 in the smallest form factor from the most reputable manufacturer out there in the space, which is Microsoft right now for this offering, in my opinion, when you compare it to other tablets uh, that try to deliver Windows 10 in a, shall I say, polished form. And yeah, there are other options, but they're not from uh, companies like Microsoft. I'm not throwing any other Chinese manufacturers under the bus. It's just, this is best in breed. The problem is the hardware just isn't there. And I understand that they're trying to make money, $400, $550. They thought it would be a sweet spot of some sort because it undercuts um, at least Android tablet pricing, but it doesn't undercut Apple um, with that entry-level iPad. And people are going to compare this to an iPad, even though I'd, I definitely would take this over the iPad. I have to tell you, no question about it. But get into Android tablets, and I'm not so sure of it, because at its price point, uh, being similar to the Tab S3 or 4, I already did my comparison. And for my needs, from content consumption, there's no doubt that I thought this would be better, and it's not. It just isn't. Whether you're in tablet mode or you're in full desktop mode. Of course, migrating to the desktop mode, a pain in the ass. I mentioned that uh, in my first update. And so there are a lot of things to like. I just wish there was a better processor under the hood. And I knew that going into the game, I just didn't know how sluggish it would really be. And I think that is pricing and that processor are its two, uh, you know, those are the Achilles here, so to speak. Because if this was priced at $300, which will never happen, it will once it goes on sale, the entry level one. If that was where it started and this ended up being a $500 model max, I think they would have done much better. Uh, I think this would actually be something, a gift that 
come holiday season, everyone it's in every household. But the price point, getting it so close to the pricing of, again, something like a Surface Pro, there's just no way to consider this. I know I'm repeating myself, but you just, you can't. I won't recommend to any of you to do so. That includes, you know, the Core M version. I mean, I'm not a fan of that model at all, but how could you ever come so close in price and Trust me, I'm all for being budget conscious. I'm all about that performance uh, per dollar. But that's where this thing sinks. The performance per dollar just isn't there. Build quality is. That's for sure. I mean, uh, would I love for Microsoft to finally start putting uh, AMOLED displays on their tablets, computers? Yes, please do it. Please, please. And I really was so excited about the Surface Go because it had been so long since they had returned to the tablet space to try to give us something uh, not just palatable, but desirable. And I thought they had it. And when early reviews came in that this was kind of garbage, because that's how a lot of reviews came in, I didn't believe it because I, for obvious reason I have to, reasons I have to actually spend time with the device and find out whether or not there's credence to such claims. Unfortunately, I'm going to end up in that same group, which I kind of made clear at the top of the video. So if you're still here, it's because you're still interested in what I have to say about it uh, beyond yay or nay. And uh, the bottom of the line with this tablet hybrid wannabe is that it has all the polish that Microsoft can bring to the table. It just doesn't have, I think, the space because of the entry-level Surface Pro. And maybe I should have said that at the top also. Maybe I did. I don't even remember. We're 12 minutes in. But if that model doesn't exist, this has a place. But as long as there's a Surface Pro that's, you know, achievable for seven to $800, and I know Microsoft on paper thought, well, 550 to 800 that's a pretty big leap. Yeah, not when there are ones on sale. And not when you have last gen, you know, inventory still sitting on the market floor. If people can go out and buy last year's Surface Pro, not the current gen, which is already getting elderly, that is a better option without hesitation. Uh, sure, you're not going to get the same battery life. It's not going to be as small. We've gone over that, but it's going to be actually usable. You're not going. It has its own issues too but you're not going to run into the problems that I've discussed through the course of this video, which is not wanting to run. It will not be a pleasure, as I mentioned, to run anything intensive on here, whereas with something like an entry-level Surface Pro, it's possible. It's not going The suffering will not be the same, I promise. So that's really the key to the Surface Go, is that I do still see a place for it on some level, but once it's gone down in price... Like I said, entry level one at 300 bucks, I'd pick it up. At 400, I think they're asking too much because you're getting into competitive pricing with the Tab S3. So forget about their own hierarchy of pricing with Surface products. So that's where everything kind of goes awry. Um, but if there was a $300 offering of this nature, I could see a place for it because on vacation or something, if I absolutely knew that I didn't need anything but a tablet, but still needed to know that I could do something in Windows 10 if I had to, that I know is not a limitation of a mobile operating system like iOS or Android, then it's a no-brainer. Even if it's a secondary device on the trip, it's a no-brainer. Like, even if I am bringing my laptop, I would bring this as a tablet if it was 300 bucks. Uh, but it would have to have specs similar to the one that I'm using here. Maybe not 8 gigs of RAM. Maybe we can compromise at 6. But uh, even at 4, I think if the processor... Well, with this processor, uh, it would be fine, I guess, with the pricing that I'm describing. But, you know, make this 600 bucks and improve the processor, we're in a different world. But I guess there is no room in the range from Intel, and that's really why we ended up with this. And I'm sorry you're staring at a static image, but I don't have a whole hell of a lot to tell you that's going to impress you... I'm not here to do that. Um, this isn't a smoke show. The Surface Go could have been amazing. Instead, 
it's a great concept that falls short and should be less expensive for what it is. Um, again, Microsoft thought there was a big enough gap between its pricing, the one you're looking at right here, and the Surface Pro entry level. And quite frankly, there was enough room on the pricing, but there's too much room on the performance difference. And that's the killer. And I hope I've made that abundantly clear. So it's not that the Surface Go isn't worth buying. For many of you, it will be the, the go-to device over an Android or, or iOS tablet. But I don't think that's going to be a majority. And I think, I wonder if there's going to be another Surface Go. I mean, Microsoft took a pretty long vacation, like three years, from making another tablet version of the Surface Pro, as odd as that even sounds to say. And um, I was, like I said, I was really excited, but this makes me wonder if they're going to do it again. I don't know what the sales numbers have been, look like. I know it didn't sell out anywhere. I don't know anyone bragging about loving it, really. There's not a tremendous market like that. So I hope this educates anyone that had questions about it. I mean, Bluetooth, every, all of those things function perfectly fine. And the expandable storage, also great to have. Uh, the cameras, speakers, all of that is completely serviceable as a tablet. Nothing wrong with it. Like I said, build quality, stellar. Um, screen quality, also best in class if you're not in the OLED realm. But that's where it ends. And that Windows 10 performance is also where it ends. So I'm waiting to see that refresh of the Surface Pro lineup. And I think that's when we're going to see these things drop in price. And they might become great holiday gifts exactly for that reason. Because if we do end up seeing them at 300 and let's say 450 respectively, I think these things are a buy. I think the, these things are worth picking up. Um, that's when they become so inexpensive that just as a tablet, which by the way, this whole review is really just about valuing this as a tablet alone. You know, and not taking into account all the expenses of the add-ons that I have. Uh, those expenses exist for other tablets as well, but the majority of users don't necessarily buy into the entire China plastic um, escapade of all of the accessories that we know cost $5 to make but are sold for, you know, 50 And then the keyboard covers that are, uh, like for the tab lineup, that are $150 and probably cost about $5 or $10 to make. Whatever the, you know, it's incredible margins. Um, so, yeah, there we have it. Purely as a tablet, I can't recommend this to anyone. The rant is over. Uh, if the pricing drops to what I mentioned before, purely as a tablet, I can comfortably recommend this tablet. So I hope that makes it really clear. Uh, the pricing just isn't in line with the performance. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.